Mr. X with the Extreme Channel with another sell-off review. If you know what that is, then you don't. Then you can fast forward through the intro. If you don't know what that is, it's a piece that I've had for a while, but I'm selling off to make room. So before I sell them off, I am reviewing them. And uh, when you see He-Man, one thing comes to mind, and you you know you want to do it. You know you want to. See, I told you you wanted to do it. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel with another piece that's in the Extreme Collection for now. It's not brand new, I've had it for a few years, but this is he-Man from Masters of the Universe by Sideshow Collectibles. This is a one-fifth statue, meaning it is one-fifth scale of what it would be in real life, so he's five times smaller. And they did a whole Masters of the Universe line, including He-Man, um, Skeletor, Evil-Lynn, She-Ra, Orko, and I think that's about it. I own him, Skeletor, and Orko. I've reviewed the Orko before, actually. Go check that out. It's when there was no Maja cases behind me. And he originally retailed for 400 bucks and they made 3,750 of these. I think that's right. Yeah, 3,750. Wow. And they made uh, 2,500 are the collectors or the normal version, which comes essentially just like this for the most part. And then they made uh, 1,250 of the exclusive version. Now this is way back in the day, not way back in the day, but a few years ago when Sideshow uh, price collectors and exclusive the same and they actually had reasonable prices at $400 for a one-fifth scale statue. So the difference between the two, first of all, all of them come with him holding the sword right here that you see. However, the exclusive version, the 1250 they made, has a He-Man battle axe you can switch out that sword with. And all of them came with a sheath for his sword that you put on the back. But the exclusive has the sword in the sheath in case you were displaying the battle axe. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, I purchased him because he's part of my childhood, part of growing up, and the one of the first statues I actually ever ordered from Sideshow was Skeletor, like four years ago. I don't know how long ago it was. And I loved him so much, I got a great deal on eBay for this guy, so I went ahead and purchased him. Because there's so many of them, the price is pretty affordable. I got him, I can't remember how much, but it was under retail. And the reason I'm selling him is because I'm getting a custom He-Man. Here's a picture of it. And I'm also getting a Battle Cat, as you see with him, and he has two different torsos, so that'll come in the next few months. Really excited about him. And of course, I'm going to review him as I review all new pieces that come into the Extreme Collection. And I just like him better. I like the pose better, I like the portrait better, and I like the fact that it's quarter scale. The big problem I'm gonna run into is they're also doing a custom Skeletor. I like Sideshow's Skeletor better. Here's a picture of that. But this is one fifth. So this is one-fifth, and my new He-Man will be one-fourth. Oh, what will I do? The world may end, but we'll figure it out. So let's measure this one-fifth scale piece. So from top to the tip of the sword is 21 and a half inches to He-Man's head is about uh, 17 inches or so. And the base, he's probably 10 inches deep. Wide is about the same, but if you go all the way out to his sword, it's about 13 inches or so. So that's the nice thing about being one-fifth scale. Very compact, doesn't take up a lot of room. That is nice. But let's jump into the concept and design of this guy, uh, because from my knowledge, I think uh, them and Pop Culture Shock Toys are the only people that have come out with a He-Man. And He-Man, uh, as you guys know, is a big cartoon. I don't need, I'm sure there's comics or something related to him. He's part of Masters of the Universe. He's the strongest guy. Uh, 
Ivan Drago played him in the movie with uh, Monica from Friends. A few of you will catch that reference. It's the video I showed at the beginning, which I love that movie. It's so corny, but it's so good. I love the music too when he's you know doing using the cosmic key. But anyway, let's jump into the cosmic and uh, or the cosmic and design. The cosmic and the uh, design. The the concept and the design. So he's standing here on a base, which looks like it's part of Castle Grayskull of some type, which is, you know, where the good guys live in, the, in this universe. And it almost looks like teeth coming out of the sides, which may be comic accurate or not. I don't remember. But uh, it's a really cool looking base. We'll get into some of that in the paint and sculpt. And he's standing on it, very victorious. He's known for pulling out uh, his sword and screaming, I have the power. Some of his power originates from the sword. That's kind of how he transforms in the cartoons. And he's in a museum pose, meaning he's taking a picture and he's roided out, showing all of his muscles, his hair flowing in the wind. I'm not a fan of this portrait at all. I actually like the Pop Culture Shock Toys portrait a little bit better, um, which here's a picture of that right here. Also cool piece. But one of the things I like more about this piece is that it's less cartoony, if you know what I mean, which ironically the custom I'm getting is more cartoony. Is that a word? I just trademarked it. Mr. X, hashtag cartoony, with a Y. So he's standing there very victorious, showing his power. I think it's the perfect pose for He-Man. Uh, he does have a mixed media cape that is kind of, I don't know how it's supposed to flow on him. I have it in between his shoulders and his armpit. So I don't like that. I wish it would have been a real cape. And I guess you could always string it however you wanted to. But an interesting choice on how they did that. Uh, Skeletor's cape is also mixed media. The rest is completely sculpted. When we say mixed media, we mean fabric. It's just a fancy way. We use fancy terms on this channel. You got that? But uh, yeah, design-wise, few different pieces to him. The base is one piece. As I said, you put his cape on. His uh, right hand is removable with either the sword or the ax. And obviously you can remove the sheath on the back. And then I believe his left hand uh, that's holding the shield is also removable. His portrait is not, which is nice because there's no seam line. Uh, no issues putting them together went really well, which is great because I bought them uh, from eBay back in the day. But uh, let's jump right into the paint and sculpt. And honestly, for a $400 uh, piece this size, it's really good. I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with everything in that line. Uh, as I said, Skeletor was one of the first pieces I ever got and it kind of launched me into the whole statue world. And let's jump right into the base here. Parts of this are, I, I don't like the outer part of this. So that, that uh, I think the paint's good, but I don't like the texture and the stones. It doesn't look like a castle wall. The, the inconsistency on the texture is kind of what throws me off. But the color looks good. The gray, light grays and dark grays and blacks and almost some orange and green, not orange, but yellow and oranges in there. So that part looks okay. The teeth look cool, uh, what I call the teeth. So it's on this bottom green type uh, texture variation. It's, it's strange looking. It almost looks like a creature when you start looking at it close. And then the teeth are done awesome. They look like real teeth. I love the coloring. I love the cracks in them. I love how some are pointed, some are... Um, blunt and then I equally like the top of the base so it's this this makes me think of a castle the throne room and it's a little bit cracked but there's this cool design and texture on there and the different inlays of uh, grays and yellow color looks really good and one last part in between the teeth on certain parts of it you have this uh, these brown symbolic uh, pillars almost and it's mainly on the uh, his right side in the back but it looks good, I like the color. It adds a little bit more color to the base. I'm gonna jump to his cape really quick to get this over with. I don't like his cape. Uh, it's see-through. I do like the fact they weathered it on the bottom. But again, I don't like how it's hanging. Uh, it's just average. It's no wires, not poseable or anything. Then let's move to his boots, which are kind of a mix of Viking and Paladin uh, mixed together, kind of this Celtic uh, knight vibe. These brown leather boots on the bottom looks good. A little bit, of, a lot of texture in there. There's some folds as it goes up the side and you see the straps from his uh, shin guards. And at the top has the traditional, as I said, very Celtic, uh, keep him warm. Then he's, na so his, his feet are really hot, but the rest of him is probably freezing. And then on the front has these really cool, this is almost like a knight with some eagles. 
and this gold, uh, not too shiny, not too bright. Very, very cool. Then check out his skin. I like the texture on his skin. It's, it's kind of grainy in certain areas and they roided him out perfect. He's very buff uh, all the way from you know his uh, uh, thunder thighs here and there's some good variations in the color of the thighs. And we're gonna see that in his torso as well. And then take a look at the dress he's wearing. Looks really good. Again, kind of, you know, reminds me of the Scottish Celtic type uh, aspect. This is mixed media. It does look a little bit like fabric, but it's not. It's fully sculpted with all these uh, raised dots in the middle of them. Kind of has this leather feel and look to it. And I think they did a great job with the shading to pull that off. And this is all just right underneath his belt. And I like the variation in color in his belt, which we're going to see on his chest emblem. Uh, the straps for that. So it's kind of these this metallic belt with again an eagle on the, the middle, which I don't remember if that's He-Man's symbol or why they have that, but it looks good. Then check out his chest here again. Some texture on his skin. I like the coloring they used. Very good shading uh, for a skin-like effect. And you can even see his belly button underneath his four-pack, almost a six-pack. See his nips. Great job on his body, very He-Man-like. Not only the anatomy, but the paint. And then you see that emblem in the middle of his chest that I was talking about, kind of the, the, the not kind of, but it's a red cross type uh, with almost looks like fish on the side of it where his straps are strapped in. His straps look great, great sculpt, great texture, great paint. And then let's check out his uh, biceps and triceps, his arms here, his shoulders. Again, they did a great job roiding him out. Looks really good. The color, you see some veins in there. And his back, here's a few pictures of his back. Again, you see the same musculature. And then take a look at his sword sheath. Very cool, another eagle symbol. I love the armor on his left uh, shoulder. It's gray skull. The castle looks like a skull, that's why it's called Grey Skull, with almost a crown, this golden crown on top. Really makes the statue pop and it just looks badass and it has these sculpted, uh, this sculpted brown uh, leather strap holding it on. Doesn't look as leathery as his dress or his boots, so it could have done a little bit better on that to make it look more realistic. And then check out his shield. I'm not a huge fan of the shield, but it looks alright. It has again that red cross symbol and this uh, brown leathery uh, texture behind it and the silver inlay. Check out his sword here, another close up on his sword. I think they could have done more with the sword. It looks like a normal sword, doesn't look as cool as you would think He-Man's sword is. The Sword of Grey Skull, I think it's called. Moving on to his Goldilocks, so flowing in the wind. Again, too long for me. I like a He-Man with shorter hair, even though Dolph Lundgren had longer hair. Uh, too uh, Ken, you know, Ken Barbie doll like for me. There's different shading in there though. It's not just blonde, but you see some of the black shading. And then his portrait, uh, his expression I'm not a fan of, but they, they did do a good job sculpting it. Uh, the eyebrows are sculpted on. His eyes just looking on. I don't know what to say about this portrait. I just don't like it personally. It's not my He-Man, not my He-Man, hashtag. But there's, I don't know what I don't like about it. So I'm just kind of showing you guys the pictures and you can decide for yourself. So that's it. That is uh, Sideshow Collectibles He-Man from their Masters of the Universe line. Uh, very cool piece. There are probably, since there was almost 4,000 of these statues made, this has probably been reviewed on YouTube at least 50 times. So if you're watching, thank you very much. Uh, most of the time when you find someone watching in a situation like this, you know, when it's been out for years, they're watching because of the channel. So from the channel, uh, is that the Hunger Games? I don't, I don't remember. I salute you. There you go. But uh, thanks for watching. I know I didn't crack a lot of jokes on this one. I'm sorry, I'll do better next time. If you hate the jokes, keep watching. They're gonna get worse. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think of this piece. Let me know if you've ever owned it or, uh, yeah, or just say hi. Say hi. Hi, Mr. X, what's up with you? And we can dialogue. Take care, guys.